Hello everyone, myself Dr. Jyoti Mandala. Welcome you all to the video lecture series on the course operating systems. So we are learning about one functionality of the operating system or one service that is provided by the operating system that is process management. So as part of that we already learned um, uh, about what actually a process is uh, and what are all the different states a process has to go, go through all these things we have learned in the last class i hope you all are clear with this one so in today's class we learned about we learn about this uh, process control block which is also abbreviated as pcb okay so this talks about uh, a unique identification so this holds the information about the process where this information will help us help the operating system to uniquely char characterize the uh, uniquely characterize the process okay so this process control block is also called as a task control block okay note on all of you what is this process control block then we'll see what are all the elements that are considered in the process control block to uniquely characterize this one okay the first point is each process that means for each process this process control block will be there so each process is represented in the operating system by a pc that means if you have if you have 100 processes all the 100 processes will be having each each and every 100 process in the 100 processes will be having a, its own that means we are having 100 pcbs okay and the pro each process will be uniquely identified each process will be uniquely identified by the pc now to, to uniquely identify the uh, process what are all the car what are all the elements are there in this pro process control block we'll see that one and we'll understand what it represents okay so these are all the elements that are there in the process control block we'll see one by one okay so starting from process id we have process state program counter register information scheduling information memory related information accounting information status information relating to io okay we'll see one by one what are all these things okay so starting from process id process id is nothing but to uniquely identify your process we need to use this process id okay so this can be considered as a unique identification number or else you can say this as an identifier so each process will be having a unique number right so to make it different from the other processes a unique number will be given so that the operating system can identify that process right now coming to the next one process states process state is nothing but in the last class only we learned about this one there are five states in a process um, state diagram starting from new state ready state okay all these things we learned in the last class ready state and then we had running state and then we had waiting state and then last one is terminate state now at a particular time the process is in which state that information will be maintained in this one okay it keeps on updating present at the initial state it will be in the ready, st ready state when it, a cpu is allotted it will be in the running state when it is allotted to the this one uh, ivo operations need to be performed then it will be in the waiting state once the execution is done it will be in the terminate state so depending upon the time uh, time to time depending upon the state in which that information will be maintained in the process state okay next one is program counter so to understand this program counter let me clearly understand uh, let me clearly tell you here but before that understand program counter is nothing but a one register okay what this information what the register will hold is this holds the an address of next instruction to be executed Now what is address of next instruction suppose let us consider you have uh, five instructions to be executed let us consider that one first okay so let us consider you have five instructions like this instruction one okay second instruction third instruction and fourth so let us consider this is a memory representation and this is our process 
T1. All right. Now each instruction will be assigned one memory address. Let us consider this is 2000 and this is 2002. I am randomly giving this can be any address. Okay. For our understanding, I am giving the address like this. This can be any address. Don't think like always it will be 2000, 2002, 2004. No, that may not be the case. Okay. 2006 and 2000, 2008. Just for our understanding, I have given a random values. Now, let us consider that this program um, is now in the ready state. Ready state is nothing but it is uh, it is now assigned to the CPU. That means now we are, uh, it, it is now waiting for the CPU. Now, suppose this pro process got a chance, it got a CPU type, then it is in the running state. Now, whenever you are executing, then suppose if you are executing this line of instruction, then this address, 2000 address will be stored in the program counter. Are you understanding that that means the program counter is holding this address suppose next time if suppose if you are executing this statement then this address will be hold by the program counter so always remember whatever the next instruction you want to execute no its address will be available in the program counter so the cpu can refer to this program counter to get address get the address of the next instruction to be executed all right so in detail about how way the present address instruction will be there all these things you are going to learn in another subject which is called as computer organization and architecture but here you need to understand only this part is enough for you program counter is one type of register which holds the address of uh, next instruction to be executed right now coming to the next part of information uh, that is your cpu mm -hmm. What is this one? Uh, uh, register information. This register information talks about what sort of CPU registers we are going to maintain. So, we need, we need to maintain multiple registers like accumulators. Okay. And then we need to store, maintain regi index register. Okay. And then we need to maintain stack register or else some general purpose registers. Okay, all these uh, re uh, in registers are to be maintained in the CPU itself. These registers are maintained in the CPU itself. Where, it, uh, where the information uh, 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 will be directly taken by the CPU. Okay, these registers are used to store the data. Let us take one simple example. Let us consider you want to perform an operation of A plus B. Whenever you want to perform the operation of A plus B, A variable, V variable data cannot be taken. The value of A will be stored in one register and the value of B should be stored in one register. Okay, that means A and B registers value, A and B value should be stored in registers only. To perform that task, to perform to store those results we can use these registers okay depending upon its um, you know, like uh, accumulators can be used to store these registers or accumulator can also be used to store the intermediate results registers always remember one point here the um, registers type and the registers count will depending it will depend upon the computer architecture whatever we are store we are using it may not be same for all the computers depending upon the computer um, architecture the number of registers and the size of registers may vary that you need to understand okay now coming to the next type of information that we are storing is scheduling information now what is the scheduling information scheduling information talks about what type of cpu scheduling algorithm you are using okay so this talks about cpu scheduling algorithm Now, depending upon the type of the scheduling algorithm, its related information has to be maintained. Let us consider if you are storing um, uh, uh, priority scheduling algorithm. Now, in priority scheduling algorithm, what type of information you need to store? Which, what is the priority of each process? So, each process priority has to be stored. Isn't it or not? Suppose if you are storing, if you are using um, uh, uh, FCFS scheduling algorithm. Now, if you are using FCFS, uh, FCFS means first come first serve. Then you need to maintain uh, information stately which process has come first. When the process has entered into the ready state first. Okay. That information has to be maintained. Suppose if you are using a round robin, round robin scheduling algorithm. In case of round robin scheduling algorithm, you need to maintain the time quantum. Isn't it or not? Time quantum is required. Why? Because it, depending upon the time quantum, that much of time will be allocated by the CPU. So, such information will be maintained in the scheduling algorithms. 
got it so about the scheduling algorithms how they work everything we are going to learn in future but understand here this block in pcb this block represents what type of scheduling algorithm you are using and its related information will also be stored okay now coming to the next information that is memory related information now memory related information means in order to effectively utilize our memory because always remember memory is very costly isn't it or not so to effectively utilize our memory multiple registers are maintained by the operating system like um, uh, like base register limit register pace table segmentation table all these uh, tape registers will be used to uh, store the memory related information why we need to have a memory related Im information in order to manage and maintain the memory effectively the operating system maintains some uh, registers i'll list down some registers here so base register what is the use of this base register base register is used to store the starting address of the uh, this one registers okay next we have limit register what is the use of this one it will be using to know the length of the register and then we have page table page table is nothing but uh, this is used to store uh, the at the, at the time of paging we will be learning about uh, memory management in detail at that time you will be understanding for page what is page table segmentation table all this information will be maintained in this information related so about for this particular process p1 what sort of memory related information is required that will be stored in these registers okay now coming to the next uh, next one is accounting information now what is this accounting information accounting information means cpu related information will be stored here what is the cpu related information like um, you can make a note cpu related information cpu related information means um, what is the cpu time used for a, by this process what is the cpu time used and how much remaining time how much remaining time uh, uh, it wants the cpu time okay and then what is the process number and what all this information okay so such information will be maintained here that means cpu related complete information will be maintained in the accounting information okay the next one is next information that we need to have is about uh, uh, io devices related information this includes information about io device allotment to the process that means the list of files opened okay and the list of files used by the cpu list of files used by these processes all these things so this contains information like io devices allotted to process or what are the files opened etc such information will be maintained in this part that is called as information relating to i okay so this complete information is called as a process control block that will be helping us to control the total process execution okay process id okay process id is nothing but your unique identification number which will be helping us to uniquely identify this one so unique identification number and then we have process control block which uh, process state which talks about new ready running waiting or terminate state we have a program counter which stores the address of the next instruction to be executed the information about uh, the registers which where we want to store the information about intermediate values depends upon the computer architecture this may vary okay and what sort of scheduling algorithms you are using and its related information will be stored in the scheduling information memory related information will be stored using these registers and cpu related information will be stored in this part and io devices related information will be stored in this part so io related information will be stored here okay so this is completely about your process control block which is also called as task control block so you, here you need to remember one point this process control block serves as a repository okay so for any information that may vary from process to process this information varies from process to process but this re uh, refers as a repository for the process got it for all the process will be having this process control block i hope you all are clear with this what is this process control block and all okay so let us all meet in the next lecture until then thank you all of you